My name is Maria Gomez. I am 51 years old and I studied agricultural technology. I teach horseback riding to little children and I also work with therapy, that is, rehabilitation with horses, otherwise known as equine therapy. Equine therapy, as its name implies, is therapy by means of a horse. The horse is the one that really brings the therapeutic benefit to these patients. There are three basic therapeutic benefits, mainly conveyance of the horse's walking patterns, transmission of body heat, and transmission of rhythmic impulses through the pelvic area. When it comes to transmitting the horse's walking patterns, that happens in diagonal or parallel lines. The horses that walk in parallel lines are not appropriate for this type of therapy. The best are those that walk in diagonal lines, since that most closely mimics the human's natural walking pattern. For transmission of rhythmic impulses through the pelvic area, it's key to guarantee good alignment, both for the therapist as well as for the patient. Because if you don't get that perfect alignment and the center of the horse and the center of the patient are not aligned, then you don't get the transmission of those rhythmic impulses through the spinal column and onto the brain where they can stimulate areas involved in balance and coordination. The transmission of body heat happens because the horse's body temperature is approximately 1.5 degrees above the human's body temperature. So when the horse is moving and the patient is moving along with the horse, that heat gets released. And that resembles the hot compresses that are applied in a therapist's office during therapy, which helps the patients to relax. All of the work that is done with a horse affects the centers of motor coordination, as the horse is a type of motor pattern. Its movement produces effects at the neuromuscular level, the sensor motor level, the psychomotor level, and the sociomotor level, and the body's basic functions. So how do motor patterns develop? When you're born, you haven't learned any motor patterns. You learn those as you start to perform certain functions. You don't know how to breathe, eat, walk, or talk. Those are all motor patterns. As you start to perform them, the brain will gradually record all of those movements. It records all of that as it's doing it. You learn through repetition. So the walking pattern transmitted by the horse is helpful for patients that have difficulty walking and whose brains haven't been able to record that motion, either because their muscle tone is too high or their muscle tone is too low, or there is an injury that prevents them from walking. So you place them on a horse that is very well aligned and centered, and the pattern that the horse is doing will gradually get recorded in the patient's brain, and that's why it's so helpful. I started this 20 years ago in 1996. A very good horseback riding academy based here in the province of Antioquia imported from Argentina some horses that were trained to work with little children as a startup project with the idea of growing it as time went on. Why did they bring them from Argentina? Because all over the world, children start out riding on ponies and small horses. So the idea was to bring that to Colombia and to start children riding at a more appropriate level. The person who brought the horses from Argentina told me that over there, they work with children with Down syndrome and autism, and that I should try it out. So when I started to look within the people I knew, and there were three or four children, each one with a different diagnosis. There was cerebral palsy, autism, and Down syndrome. So I started to work with them 
in a playful way and in connection with a pediatrician, who at the time was my daughter's pediatrician and also with a neurologist I knew. And I asked them what I had to keep in mind to avoid causing injury. And they said more or less advised me, but they always told me to keep the activities playful. Some of the common pathologies that we work with are Down syndrome, autism, cerebral palsy, diseases that cause seizures or convulsions, and we work with patients suffering from multiple sclerosis and attention deficit. How does it work? Within these pathologies, you begin the therapy with the working assumption that the pathology is either a motor or physical disorder or just a mental alteration. So depending on that, you start to guide the therapy, either passive hippotherapy, active hippotherapy, or something more along the lines of therapeutic writing. I think that when the parent or family member of a child with a disease as serious as the ones we see here, see what they are capable of achieving, when they see that they can actually accomplish something, the possibilities are endless. Because when you're convinced that your child can't do anything, you won't let them do anything. But when you see that they can do it, that they can ride a horse and they can follow directions, I think that people start believing in the child. Then it's not just about the horse, but now everyone knows that the child is capable of so much more. So I think that's part of strengthening their self-esteem and not just for the patient, but also for the family around them. And you see that a lot when you work with the families of the disabled, that they become paralyzed, stuck in place. And as a result of sadness or love or an excess of pain, they sometimes don't let patients evolve. So they sometimes interfere with the process and they won't let them evolve. But when they see them, they hear doing so many things. The world believes in them, and many new doors open up. <laughs> 